Hey, this is Corey from Wolfpack Woodcraft. And in today's video, we're gonna go over 10 things you need to go camping for the very first time. Uh, with spring right around the corner, I know a lot of us are getting excited to go out and enjoy nature, a lot of us for the very first time. So I put together a list of 30 items that I separated into three separate videos just to save time. So consider subscribing so you don't miss the entirety of the list. I also left uh, links in the description to items that you might have to purchase. Now I tried to keep it simple. The best way I found to make your first experience the most enjoyable is to keep it as simple as possible. So some of these things you're going to have laying around the house, some of these things you're going to be able to get or already have, but there are some things like a tent that you're going to need to purchase and I have links in the description box down below that really help out the channel and should help you guys get exactly what you're looking for. So. With that being said, the first item is, of course, a tent. <laughs> I, uh, I went through and I got a couple of my favorite tents. This one here is a Slumberjack six-person tent. The tent that I currently use is an Outdoor Vitals two-person tent. Uh, but recommending to you, this is the tent that I started with. First time I went camping by myself, it was an Outdoor, uh, yeah, Outdoor, or, uh, Ozark Trail dome tent and this thing wasn't the best tent in the world but luckily I enjoyed camping so much that I got past the nuisance of the tent but because this thing was such a pain in my butt I really thought that I would recommend this one here it's a little bit more expensive than the Ozark Trail tents that you find at Walmart but it's gonna keep you dry it's gonna handle the rain and the elements a lot better and this is a Coleman Sun Dome tent. I really like this tent. I actually bought this for a budget video that I made and then I ended up continuing to use it just because I enjoy it so much. I love the space and how roomy it is. I love the ventilation. And so I really enjoy this tent. So this is the one that I would recommend to you. It's not gonna break the bank and it's, like I said, it does really well in the weather. Uh, I'm gonna do a dedicated video just on tents and so if you really don't know what you're looking for, you don't know how to use a tent, all these different tent related questions I will answer in a future video. So stay tuned for that. And now let's jump into number two. All right, so you have your tent, you have something you're going to sleep in, now you need something to sleep on. Now this is the air mattress that I use. This is a Thermarest X-Therm. Uh, it's very expensive, but it's very lightweight and small. I don't recommend that for somebody just getting started. Uh, that's something that you can invest in later. But your first time camping, I suggest getting an air mattress. Uh, these things are affordable. You can get them at Walmart. You can get them all over the place. I do recommend getting the pump. Blowing these things up with your mouth takes forever and it's a pain in the butt. And so a lot of them come with a pump. If it doesn't, you're going to have to make that extra purchase to get a pump because it is worth it. Uh, just make sure that you charge your pump before you go. There's nothing worse than spending the money on a pump and thinking you have it. And then when you get out to camp, you realize that it's dead and you got to blow it up with your mouth anyway. So make sure that you get the pump. Make sure you charge the pump. And then you can have a nice sleep system. The advantage of a air mattress is if you go out and you go camping and you have a horrible time and you never want to do it again, you can still utilize this in your home. Uh, me and Caroline sleep on it. This is a queen size mattress. They come in all different sizes. And so what we do is when we have company, we'll inflate this and me and Caroline will sleep on this and we'll give the company our bed. Or if we're having a sleepover and there's kids around, the kids can sleep on here. And so even though you are buying it for camping, you can still utilize it in a lot of different aspects of life. You can use it in your apartment, you can use it in your home. And so it's not just a lost cause. It's not a one thing. If you buy a tent, you're gonna need that for camping. You're really not gonna use it for anything else. Where this, I think you can use multiple different ways. Even if you're going to spend the night at somebody else's house, you can bring your own bed with you and uh, save them space. And so this is my recommendation for number two, and that is a air mattress. All right, so number three, all right, so you have your tent that you're going to be sleeping under. You have your sleeping mat or your air mattress that you're gonna be sleeping on. 
And now you need something to sleep in. You need something to cover up with. And so I recommend blankets. Uh, these are wool blankets. This is a fleece blanket that my mom made me. There's a lot of different, you can take the blankets off your bed. A lot of people like to use sleeping bags. I use sleeping bags. But I like to use blankets sometimes too. I use wool blankets. And the advantage is it's comfortable. It's not as confining. You're not cocooned into this small little sleeping bag. You have room to stretch. You have room to sleep just like you would at home. You can even bring your blankets right off your bed if you want to and just sleep just like you would at home. I do recommend bringing a blanket big enough that you can fold in half and, and sleep on top of it and have it cover you at the same time while still having room to sprawl out. Or bringing two blankets, one to lay down on top of your air mattress because that air mattress might get cold. Uh, that's, there's not any insulation in there. And so if the ground is cold, it's gonna make the air inside the sleeping mat cold and then you're gonna get cold. So if you can put an insulating blanket over that, it's gonna keep you a lot warmer. If it's really hot outside, you can take that blanket off and then the cold will actually feel good while you're covered up with your fleece blanket. And so these are things that you're gonna to have to learn over time. But for your first time, I recommend bringing two blankets, one for on top of your air mattress and one to cover you and then that way you can take the top one off, you can take the bottom one off, you can do whatever you need to do, but it's better to have it and not need it than need it and not have it. And so blankets, and I'm not gonna leave links to blankets because I think that you have some lying around. I don't want your very first time going camping to break the bank, and I think you'll have the blankets you need lying around the house, or you can go to a uh, Goodwill or uh, clothes closet or somewhere and get blankets for really, really cheap. So blankets is the number three, not a sleeping bag. If you want a sleeping bag, you're gonna have to watch other videos because that gets a lot more complicated as well. So get yourself some blankets and go and enjoy your first night sleeping in the woods. All right, so number four, no bed is complete without a pillow. And so again, I'm not gonna leave links to pillows. You can grab the one off your bed. Uh, I literally just grabbed this one off the couch. This is one of our couch decorations. You can tell because the dog ate some of it. There's a big hole in it. Uh, but the one that I use is small, compact, and inflates. And so for me, I like to go hiking and backpacking sometimes. So for having smaller, compact things that fit in my backpack so that I can travel over distance, it's important to me. It's not gonna be important to you. Don't spend the money on these expensive pillows until you get further along in your adventuring. Once you've gone camping a bunch of times and you've kind of learned what you like and what you don't like, you can always upgrade all of these things into better or different options. And so this is what I use. But again, you can have little throw pillows. You can have little tiny pillows. You can grab the pillow off your bed. Uh, there's lots of different options and pillows probably lying around your house. Again, you don't have to go out and buy one. Just grab whatever you got lying around and it should work. Uh, if you've slept on your couch and you've used this pillow while you slept on the couch, it's going to be exactly the same sleeping on your air mattress. Uh, the pillow on your bed is going to feel exactly the same as it does while you're sleeping at home. And so don't get too wrapped up in a pillow but you will need a pillow. A lot of people forget them. A lot of people leave them at home because they don't think they need them. You will sleep so much better having a pillow, trust me. And so that is my number four pick is a pillow. All right, so number five is going to be water. You're gonna have to carry water. For me, I filter water. I filter all my water once I get to camp. I live in Minnesota, the land of 10,000 lakes. There's always a lake or a river or a stream or something near me where I can filter water. Uh, when I first started out, when a lot of people first start out, they're not comfortable trusting a water filter. They're not confident in their ability to use one properly. And so most people, including myself, uh, use carry water. And so you get a big jug like this. Now they make a lot of different kinds of jugs that can do different things. 
just keep it simple. Go to Walmart, get a five gallon jug or a seven, this is a seven gallon jug, and make sure that it has the spigot. Most campsites have a designated picnic table for every site. So you set this on the edge of the picnic table and then you can just open it and you can fill your cup or you can fill your water bottle or you can fill your pots or your pans or whatever to cook with. Uh, you can rinse off a towel and kind of sponge bath yourself. Uh, you can use it to get the sand and mud off your feet. And so make sure you get a big one. A lot of people, they don't realize how much water you're going to actually use. Uh, even if you bring bottled water, if you bring a whole bunch of bottled water to drink, still need a big thing of water. Uh, again, this is one of those things where it's better to have it and not need it than need it and not have it. The more water you have, the less you have to ration. And so when you're feeling gross and you feel like you need to just kind of wipe off, you, you'll do it, right? If you have a one gallon jug, you're just going to stay gross because you're not going to want to run out of that water. And so you're going to ration it out and you're going to feel gross and you're not going to clean yourself. You know, you're not going to wash your hands as much maybe. And that is not fun. That is not a good way to spend your first night out camping. So bring plenty of water. Lots and lots of water. That way you can wash your hands without feeling guilty. You can get, like I said, like a sponge or a rag. You can wipe your pits and wipe yourself off and cool yourself down. You can wipe your feet off. Uh, you're not going to be rationing if you have seven gallons. Or if there's a bunch of people, get a couple of these, you know. And then that way you have plenty of water to keep everybody hydrated, keep everything clean, do your dishes. Uh, there is... I can't stress enough, you need more water than you think. Uh, this seven gallon jug is for me and Caroline, and we go through quite a bit of it, but like I said, we don't ration it out. If we need it, we use it, and that's a much more comfortable way of being, I feel, than having to ration out water. So get a big five gallon, seven gallon jug, even if you got water bottles that you're going to be bringing with you to drink, you still need lots of water. So. This is my number five pick is a water jug, a large one. All right, so number six is going to be a flashlight. Now flashlights come in all different shapes and sizes. Uh, some people prefer a headlamp to a flashlight. Uh, the reason you would want a headlamp is so that you have both your hands open. So if you're gonna be working on things or if you're going to be cooking or cleaning or doing camp chores, a headlamp is a better option because you can do all of those things without having to hold a flashlight at the same time or do one of these things while you're working. Uh, you're not going to need anything fancy. I have some fancy through nights here. But just go to your gas station or Walmart or wherever and just pick up some LED flashlights. Uh, the thing that you need to understand is you're probably not going to be working in the dark. In the summer, the days are longer. You have a longer period of sunlight to do what you need to do. Uh, if you plan in advance, you're gonna have everything you need done before sunset. And so at night, the only time you're really going to need a flashlight is to use the bathroom, or if there's something going on, you can shine a light to see what it is. Uh, the, the biggest advantage to having a nice powerful flashlight for your first time out camping is if you hear something, you can shine a light on it and you can see that it's a squirrel, okay? It's not a bear. It's not something big scary coming after you. It's a squirrel. It's a rabbit. Uh, it's a deer, maybe. Sometimes a deer will make a lot of noise for some reason. And so it's nice having a big powerful flashlight so you can shine it and see exactly what it is and know that it's not going to hurt you. It's just an innocent little creature. And so sometimes having that bigger stronger flashlight is nice but you don't need anything fancy just go to your gas station or something get one of these cheapo flashlights just so that you don't trip or stumble or fall in a hole there's a lot of people that roll their ankle because they're walking at night and there's a hole and they roll their ankle and so it's just safe for having light uh, at night and so go out and make sure that everybody you're with has their own dedicated flashlight so you can all go off and do your own separate things 
Uh, for me, it's very important because my dog is black. And so if she runs off, me and Caroline can split up and go and try to track her down and find her with our own flashlights. So always, always, always have a flashlight on you. Again, the, there's advantages to each one. You're gonna learn them over time, but just know that they all serve a very important purpose. So this is my number six is a flashlight. All right, so lucky number seven is going to be a cooler. I have a couple different coolers here. They're both Igloo. I like Igloo coolers. Uh, they're BPA free, so I make cooler corn in them. Uh, they come in all different shapes and sizes. The, there's extremely expensive ones. There are ones that are expensive but usually go on sale. That's where I got both of these igloos because they had a really good sale on them. And it's important to understand that this is an investment, again, like the air mattress, that you are going to use more often than just camping. Uh, the family reunions, picnics, tailgating, uh, if you're having a bunch of people over, it's nice to get a bunch of different beverages and then put them in the cooler. And so this is one of those things where you can either borrow one from a friend or family member that you know uses them all the time. Uh, but having a cooler is nice. It's nice being able to pack up a bunch of stuff and go head out to a lake, even if it's just for the evening, you know, packing up some burgers and some brats, some beverages and having a big cooler to store that all in. It's, it's a good investment. And so I'll leave a link down below for one of these coolers. Uh, the only advantage I see in the shape, I have a small Jeep Liberty. And so the back is not very big. And so I like this smaller, this square taller one because it fits in the back of my Jeep a lot better with all the seats up. Uh, this big long one is nice too but it takes up a lot of the back of my Jeep. I can set stuff on this one a lot easier though, which I really like. And so just depending on the circumstance, if I need to stand something up, I bring this one so that I can stand something up next to it. But if I need, if I don't need the, the length top to bottom, uh, I like to bring this one because then I can stack stuff on it. So number seven is a cooler. Uh, there's a bunch of things you're gonna put in here. It's not just for camping. Get yourself a good one and you probably won't regret it. Okay, so number eight. You are going to need something to cook on. Uh, I have a little burner here that I use. It hooks up to a canister and then I just cook with this. If it's your first time camping and you wanna experiment with this thing, it's a good option. I really like using this thing. Uh, I'm pretty sure you'll figure it out really quick. So I wouldn't say not to get this, but a better option would be one of those little portable grills. I used to have one, I must've got rid of it. But those little tiny grills are a good option. Again, you can put that on top of your picnic table. Uh, one of the best options I feel are these little burners. Again, I'll have links in the description box down below. And this takes a little butane fuel canister. It goes inside this little door here. It's very easy to use. And this is just like cooking on a propane stove at home. If your stove top is propane with the little burners and you have the little clicker to ignite it, this is identical to that. And so it'll be just like cooking at home. Uh, if you don't have a propane burner, it's still just like cooking at home. You're just going to have to turn the dial all the way to ignite it. And then once it's ignited, you can cook whatever you want. There's high, medium, and low temperature settings. And so it's very easy to cook whatever you want. Uh, what I see a lot of people doing is they depend on the fire. They're like, oh, we're going to cook all our meals over the fire. It's going to be so much fun and then it rains or they can't get the fire started or something happens to where they can't get that fire going and if you can't get a fire going, you can't cook anymore. And so what I like to recommend, what I like to do when I have people going out for the first time is have something like this so that you can cook all your meals and then if you do get that fire started, that fire started 
bring the hot dogs and the marshmallows and the s'mores, bring it all, planning to have a fire and cook over the fire, but also plan on having a backup so that you can cook all your meals on this. And if you can't get to the s'mores, if you can't get to the hot dogs over the fire, you're not just out of luck. You'll be able to still utilize this and eat all your meals. You'll be just as comfortable with or without a fire having this. And so always bring some kind of a grill or a stove or a way of cooking all your meals that is not dependent on the fire. So that is my number eight, I believe, is a stove and the fuel that goes with it. Make sure that you use the proper fuel canisters. You don't want to be trying to shove this in there. Make sure that you have the proper fuel, whether that's propane for your propane grill, charcoal for your charcoal grill, butane uh, mixture. Make sure that you have the proper fuel for the proper stove and always bring a stove. All right, so number nine, you found something to cook on. Uh, whether that's your grill or a stove or whatever it is you plan to cook with now you need something to cook on and you need pots and pans so here i have a camp specific pan that folds up uh, you're gonna see a lot of differences if you go for camp specific pots and pans you're gonna have stainless steel you're gonna have titanium aluminum you're gonna have different mess kits and different systems uh, but honestly, for your first few times camping, just grab some junk pots and pans from either your house or the Goodwill again. You don't need anything fancy. The downside to using uh, stuff that you would use in your kitchen is you're going to burn through a lot of fuel. Uh, these pots and pans are usually a lot thicker. They're more robust than the camping versions of them. And so it takes a lot more fuel to heat them up. It takes a lot more fuel to cook with. But when you first go out, you're probably going to do a couple overnighters. Uh, you're probably only going to be cooking dinner and maybe a lunch, two, maybe three meals. And so these will get you by. It's not like you're going to go through a crazy amount of fuel, but you are going to notice a big jump uh, in how much less fuel you use when you switch to a camp specific pot or pan. And so Again, if you're using cast iron, a lot of people like to use cast iron. And so if you're cast iron and you're using that camping and you want it to heat faster and everything, you need to upgrade your stove. You need to find a stove that will uh, utilize the fuel better and get hotter. But if you're using stuff like this and you're going through a lot of fuel, get camp specific pots and pans. I see a lot of times people will use something like this that's really big, really thick, and then it's wasting a lot of fuel. And so then they get a big, nice stove. They spend a lot of money on a camp stove that burns really hot, uh, utilizes the fuel really well, and then they get a different pot or pan and they try to use that and they end up burning everything because their stove is too much for the new, thinner, lighter material. And so keep that in mind, okay? If you're using something like this and it's taking a long time to cook and you're wasting a lot of fuel, the pot or the pan is probably the issue. If you're using the pot and pan and you're just die hard set on using it, a lot of people that use cast iron, they only use cast iron, then you can upgrade your stove but make sure you understand what's going on, okay? Make sure that you understand that this is the problem uh, if you're wasting too much fuel or your stove is the problem if it can't keep up with your cast iron. So make sure you understand what you're getting yourself into. Again, don't bring your nice stuff out. Keep your nice stuff at home because it can get wrecked. It can get full of soot. It can get dusty, dirty, sand in all the nooks and crannies. And so you don't wanna bring your good stuff but just some junk you have lying around will work. Maybe you wanna upgrade your pots and pans and you can take your old stuff and utilize it. And so number nine is a good set, not a, not a good set, but a set of pots and pans that you just have lying around. They'll work just fine. All right, so number 10 
And then I have a bonus one for you, but number 10 is a grill lighter. Uh, not a, not a Bic lighter, not a Zippo lighter, this is my ADC. A grill lighter, and the reason I like the grill lighter is because it has this long stem. And so the reason I didn't pair this with the grill or the pots and pans is because yes, you're going to use this to light your grill, you're gonna use it to light your pots or your stoves, uh, but you're also gonna use it to light your fire, you're gonna use it to light different things. And so it's nice having that reach, okay? Most campgrounds have a fire pit or a fire ring, and so to get your Bic lighter and reach way down in there, you get full of ash and soot and it's gross getting down in there. So it's nice having that reach for your campfire. Uh, it's nice being able to light candles if you have citronella candles or something to keep the bugs away. Having that reach makes it really easy. And so this is its own pick because like I said, it just, it does a lot more than just light your grill. And so when I first started, I carried this all the time and I used it more than I thought I ever would. And I really like having that reach. I started with a Bic lighter and it works and it does the job, but once I had this grill lighter and I had that reach, I never really went back to the Bic lighter. I really like having a grill specific lighter. And again, you can get these anywhere. Go to the gas station, go to wherever. I'm not gonna leave links to this below because again, you can go anywhere and get one of these. And then my bonus item is a cell phone. Now the reason I didn't include this in the top 10 or any of the 10 items is because I didn't think you would need to bring it. You would already bring it. Okay, you're gonna have this on you in the vehicle on your way to camp. You're gonna have it with you. And so the reason I wanna bring it up is because a lot of campgrounds and a lot of places that you're gonna end up, you're not gonna have any Wi-Fi. You're not gonna have any cell reception. And so for me, I like to listen to music on my phone and I listen to YouTube music. And so I have the YouTube music app and I'll listen to that on my way to camp. And then I reach a point where I have no service, no reception, no nothing, and all my music is gone. And so you need to think ahead and you need to download that music onto your phone so that it's there even without internet or uh, cell signal. Uh, another thing is a lot of people like to take pictures and do stuff with their phone and it all goes to the cloud and I don't do anything with the cloud but I'm pretty sure you need a Wi-Fi or an internet signal to use the cloud and so if you're going to be taking pictures and doing stuff on your phone make sure that your storage inside your phone isn't all filled up with music or apps or any of the other things that you might have filled up your storage with. Make sure that you have plenty of room so that you can take as many pictures and as many memories as you can with this device. And so the big thing I want you to take away with this is the plan ahead. Uh, understand that Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, YouTube, all the things that you're accustomed to using all the time with your phone probably aren't going to be available. Uh, put your phone in airplane mode for two hours and see what it can do. Uh, you're going to miss a lot of stuff. And so plan ahead. That is my little bonus tip for you. Again, I have two more videos. I have two more 10 videos. They're going to cater more towards like consumables, things that you're going to use out camping and then you're going to use them up. Uh, then you're going to have more comfort items. I'm going to have a list on things that are going to make you as comfortable as possible while you're in the woods. And so make sure to subscribe so you don't miss the next two list videos that I have made. And I cannot wait to see you on my next video.